Hi everyone, Christine here at Christine's Craft Table. I would like to say thank you for some sweet shout outs that I have received lately from so many YouTube channels. Your support is amazing. First, Jax at Jax Creations. Also my new friends, Ola Jo, the crocheting sailor, and Spring, the fiber enthusiast. Ola Jo is responsible for my ramping up my video output significantly this month and learning a lot in the process. So thank you, Ola Jo. And Spring does a cool thing that she calls Reverse Red Rover. And in it, she sent her viewers over to my channel one day. And then there's Gina at Turnpike Creations and Judy at Judy's Creations in Crochet. You all are amazing and I thank you. If I missed anyone, please forgive me. And I want to welcome all my new subscribers. I just topped 100. I think I'm at 125 now. And that's just amazing to me. So big thanks to all of you who came on early in January when I started out in February and recently in March, I've gotten quite a few. And I wanna mention Amanda, also known as Tat Mama and the Bag Brigade, Molly Cottenham, Sally Stevens, Suzanne, the Swedish Yarny Hooker, Laura King, Susanna at Naughty Old Crochet, Pam McClammy, Ola Jo, the crocheting, crocheting sailor, Fluffy Boots. Fluffy Boots did a nice presentation, by the way, on textures. If you haven't caught that, I would check it out for day 11 of the National Crochet Challenge. I know that's only a handful, but I truly appreciate all of you and thank you for subscribing. Today, we are continuing our celebration of National Crochet Month and the challenge from Ola Jo, the crocheting sailor. And the topic of today, day 11, is textures. I have two things I wanna share on that subject that came to mind immediately when I thought about textures. The first is a crochet along that I participated in the spring of 2022, and that was with Bag Day Crochet and crystal. And it was a blanket that she did with nine squares and the textures that she came up with were wonderful. Every week she would release a new square and the yarn that she used was this Sesame Street kind of one skein wonder. I think it was marketed as a hat or enough yarn for a hat because each of them came with this plastic uh, head of one of the Sesame Street characters and they were really adorable. Um, but I didn't have a kid to make the blanket for at the time, so <clears throat> I just used two shades of regular yarn. I used white and gray. And I used about 1,700 yards of fabric. So I gave the blanket to a family member, so I don't have it anymore, but I do have some pictures, so I will insert them here. And I will also link Bag Day's playlist. I think she still has it up for that crochet along. And you can make the blanket yourself if you'd like to. It's about lap size. And the cool thing about doing a crochet along after the fact is that you can do them back to back. <laughs> you don't have to wait a week between videos like we had to. So I just think that this small blanket is a real nice little mini study in texture and was a real delight to make. And on Bag Day's Facebook page, you can probably still see pictures of all the people that participated and what they did with um, their blankets. Many used the Sesame Street characters, but a lot of them did not and have beautiful color patterns that they chose. So it's worth checking out. 
on Bag of Day's Facebook page. That came to mind on the topic of textures is Scrubby Yarn. Here I have Yarn Bee Scrubology, and it is a four weight, 100% cotton. Here it calls for a 6.5 millimeter hook. I will use a 7 millimeter today, my prim 7 millimeter hook. I don't think scribology is as difficult as some people make it out to be, so if you haven't tried it, I encourage you to do so. I thought I'd do this demonstration to show you how easy it really is to work with. The key is using that bigger hook. So you want to use the minimum of the size recommended on the label, but I usually go up a size just to be comfortable to have those stitches be big enough to easily get in and out of and to see. And if you're making a dishcloth, which is what I use it for, you really don't have to worry about, you know, um, having really tight stitches. Especially with this yarn because it's just going to fill in the gaps. So here I just made a chain of four and did a uh, ring and we'll work 16 double crochets into the ring to start my dishcloth. You can see here it's easy to see your loops on your hook and even the double crochets as you're making them, working them into the ring, just like any other yarn. When you get a few on the ring, it's easy enough to slide them over. You just grab them near the base. I actually stopped using sponges pretty quickly after I started crocheting because I discovered the pretty dishcloth patterns on YouTube and I am a devoted fan of Glenda at Creative Grandma. She has many flower dishcloths that are just adorable. There it's easy to pull apart the stitches and see your double crochets and to continue. So I think those flowers are just the right size. I started with the big square dishcloths, but for me, they seem like they soak up all the dish soap before you can even start washing. <laughs> so I like the little flowers. They're about an 8 inch diameter and just the perfect size for me. So using the scribology in them makes them even better because you have that little center portion that is uh, gives you a little bit of extra scrubbing po power. And I tend to use it with 100% a regular cotton. So I'll make the center out of the scrubby and then do the rest of the flower with regular cotton. The scrubology is also 100% cotton. You don't want to use any of the 100% polyester versions in a dishcloth that you're going to be putting in the dryer because they will melt. <laughs> I'll show you at the end of this. I picked up some Scribology 2.0 which is 100% polyester just to show you that that is also easy enough to work with on your hook. I was pleasantly surprised. So Again, if you haven't tried Scrubology, I encourage you to try it. Give it a go, especially if you find it on sale. <laughs> it's a little bit more expensive than the regular cotton, so that's another reason to combine it with the cotton for your dishcloths. 
if your pattern calls for you to work in the top V's of your stitches when you're using Scribology you can always just go between the stitches instead just so you're not searching for those V's you can still find them because your your stitches are big enough but I find it doesn't make that much difference if I work between the stitches for just that this yarn I will also tend to put a stitch marker on that very first stitch so it's easy to know when I'm back at the beginning so I can know where the end of the round is. So there I'm just pointing out that you can easily see where your V's are. So you can insert your hook in them without too much trouble. Again, you're usually filling with your fingers as well. It's very easy to see to feel with your fingers where the the double crochets are. And then the top of them. And then I'll just show you how easy it is to frog this yarn. You do have to give it a little bit of a jiggle sometimes, but it works itself loose very easily. There's Scribology 2.0, which is 100% polyester. This you would use for, you can see there, no dryer, hand wash. <laughs> uh, you would use for just scrubbies, sheer scrubbies that you're not going to put in the dryer. I do put mine in the washer. You'll also notice it does not shed at all. I get more shedding from a uh, yarn with uh, something metallic and shiny going through it than I do from this. There you can see that this that one strand going through that is so clearly seen uh, you know it makes it very easy to work with I think it's easier to work with than the cotton than the 100% cotton scribology and there you have a completed circle just so you can see how easy it is to see those stitches And this is actually easier to frog than the 100% cotton. It just comes right out. Thanks for watching. I hope you will leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. It's free. Bye for now.